started? All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our alumni career chat. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And again, I am Lori Clemens. I'm with Career Services. I'm on the Dahlonega campus. I'm one of the career specialists. And our co-host today is the fabulous Diane Farrell. She's the director of our uh, fearless teams or our fearless Not director so fabulous. of our fearful team. No, <laughs> just kidding. I have terrible humor. Uh, so <laughs> I am so excited today that we have four amazing UNG alumni. Uh, it's been so wonderful. Um, I, I'm connected with all of them on LinkedIn, and it's just so fun to see all of their career updates and what they've been up to. Um, and it's just, it's so great to see them just excel in everything that they do. Uh, so I'm going to do a, a quick introduction, and then we'll get right into the fun stuff of our conversation, why everybody is here today. So I'm going to start with our oldest alum. Uh, I'll start with David, uh, who graduated in 2020, the good times, right? Uh, with actually three majors. I remember when David and I first met and he was like, it's accounting, it's finance, and also business with a concentration in supply. And he wanted to do like a million different things. And he's already heading right for all of that. Um, so he had a uh, concentration again in supply and uh, supply chain and logistics. And while he was at UNG, he was an active member of the Baptist Collegiate Ministries and was also a peer mentor with the disabilities program at UNG. And he's been working for the last four years at Fraser and Dieter, and he's currently a tax senior with the firm. So he's just been growing in that in that career field ever since he graduated. And David, you had done a internship with Fraser and Dieter, correct? Yes, ma'am, I had. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. So next up is Jacob Spurlock. Uh, he graduated in 2021. Uh, he's currently a systems engineer at Lockheed Martin over in Marietta. Uh, he holds a Bachelor of Science in Physics from UNG, and then also a Master's in Science in Aerospace Engineering from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Uh, he specializes in model-based systems engineering, uh, working on the design of air vehicles in his role as an advanced development programs team, also known as, is it Skunk Works? It is Skunk Works, yes. Okay. Got the, I wanted the little to make logo. sure I was saying that right. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, and previously, he had worked on missile defense programs such as the Next Generation Interceptor. So he gets to work with all kinds of cool toys, right? Awesome. And so then next up, also a graduate from 2021, is Rachel. Uh, she graduated with a Bachelor's of Business Administration, uh, and she began her career in human resources as an HR coordinator at Uline. And before we all uh, jumped on board, she was telling me how she got started at Uline with doing a little bit of temporary work. She'd work there for a little bit, and then they just kept calling her back. And now she's been there ever since. So it's fantastic. And it was so great seeing Rachel and Lindsay at our latest career fair recruiting our alum, our current UNG students. So that's always, you know, that one of those full circle moments. So very cool. And so last but certainly not least is Lindsay Brown. She's our youngest alumni, graduated just last year in 2023 with a Bachelor of Business Administration in Marketing with a digital concentration. And throughout college, she was actively involved in Greek life and also a UNG campus tour guide. Um, upon graduation, she started her role as a digital content producer with Mansfield Energy, which is just right over in Gainesville. And she is also now currently a UNG MBA online uh, student uh, working on even more education. So just keep on growing there and Again, just so much fun to see everyone just excel in everything that they do. So we'll get right into it. Um, I, you know, I'll start off with the first question. Jacob, I'm going to start with you. Um, and I was wondering, with your current position working uh, over at Lockheed Martin, um, what exactly is it that you do that you can tell? Uh, and how do you feel that UNG really prepared you for your career? Yeah, so uh, I think the biggest thing for me um, there's a lot of on-the-site uh, learning that you have to do, um, especially in a job like this. School teaches you how to learn. It teaches you, it builds that firm base um, that essentially lets you uh, prepare yourself for what life is going to be uh, in the real world. That, I think, is really what UNG set me up for. Um, 
you know, big shout out to my, my physics professors for being so involved. And, uh, it really gave me the confidence to be able to step into a role like this and feel like I was, you know, smart enough to be here, um, which I think is a challenge that a lot of people face. Excellent. Thank you so much. And and so, Lindsay, I'm going to ask you the same question. You know, you know, what all are you doing in your current career? Because uh, I do see, you know, the post uh, from Mansfield Energy and and I'm like, I think another person behind some of those things. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about what exactly you do and again, how you feel that UNG helped get you ready for all of that. Yeah, um, so I am our digital content producer. Um, so we do all of our marketing in house. And I spearhead our social media as well as have a team behind me that kind of helps me uh, put together various content. So, I mean, just in short terms, I feel like there's a wide span of things I do from day to day. It's never the same each week, um, but mainly my responsibilities lie within social media, um, social media analytics, as well as just putting together different kind of marketing collateral for our sales reps. Um, so I think the biggest thing that UNG taught me just academically was in those social media marketing classes. Obviously, social media changes. It's even changed so much even since I was in undergrad just last May. Um, so it's definitely one of those continuous learning things. But I think just kind of understanding the basic principles of marketing as well as how to apply that into the business setting is probably the most valuable thing um, that I learned as well and kind of helped me build my confidence as an early marketer. Fantastic. So David, same question. Yeah, so uh, like uh, Lori said, I'm a tax senior over at Fraser and Dieter. Um, most of my work is related to businesses throughout the year. So your partnerships, your S corporations, your C corporations, both foreign and domestic. Um, so most of my work involves, you know, like right now we're in tax season. So filing a bunch of tax returns right now. And then the remainder of the year, uh, helping clients plan for different tax income situations that they may be experiencing throughout the year. Um, I think UNG helped me prepare based on number one, being able to communicate with a variety of different clients and skill sets and experiences and backgrounds that you just don't see every day usually. Um, and I also think that, you know, career services, for example, was extraordinarily helpful in getting me on this career track true. Excellent. Thanks for the shout out. Appreciate it. And so Rachel, of course, again, last but not least, but uh, again, same question, uh, you know, what exactly do you do in HR? Because I think a lot of times people have different ideas of what HR is. And so I'd like to know about like your specialty. And, and a lot of times we do meet a lot of students who want to get into HR, but they really struggle with how to break into that. So it'd be interesting to hear how you got your start and, and what really helped you get there. Yeah, so currently I am one of the HR coordinators here at Uline. There's three of us, so um, a really good team of just the, the coordinator side. Um, I really got in here when I did some temporary work in college, and I feel like that really was the starting point, primarily because during that time I was taking such different classes like operations management and different classes like that, that our company here has those departments. And I think just having that broad overview and kind of seeing how everything works together really kind of helped me network even within the company. And then it also built some of the connections that I had here. Um, I would also say even just from the career services towards the end when I was doing my pros program and finishing up, the mock interview definitely helped kind of get, dig deep into those um, understandings of how to interview and just build upon that. And I think that really took me out of my comfort zone to really just connect with others and learn to pick up on um, different relationships that you can build. And I think that's something that has definitely helped our team just because we constantly speak with other employees. We go out and we go to career fairs and we meet with other students. And I think just being more personal and um, really understanding where they're at in their season of life, as well as where we are, it definitely has helped to kind of mold my uh, two-year journey so far as a coordinator. Oops, helps if I unmute myself. Excellent. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, so, Jacob, I'm going to go back to you really quick uh, because you had mentioned how, you know, education, you know, being in higher education, getting your degree and everything lays that foundation. But is there anything that you know now that you wish you had known when you were an undergrad? Um, 
Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I wish I knew um, the importance of, of taking extra time to focus on specific tasks. Um, I think I tried in, in college to do a little bit too much of everything rather than um, dedicating specific time to uh, specific actions. Um, you know, towards the end of my college career, that kind of tapered a little bit, you know, uh, things get a little bit more focused. You learn how to study a little bit better. Those things definitely uh, put you on a better path. But I think knowing my personality now and knowing my work ethic now, had I uh, translated that back to my first few years at UNG, I think that I would have been a little bit more successful than I was in those first few years. Um, I'm, I'm glad to have ironed it out towards the end of my career, but uh but I definitely think it would have put me on a on a better path to be more focused uh, in specific areas for sure. Okay, fantastic. And so, Lindsay, same question because I know you were involved in a lot of different things while you were at UNG. Um, so, what what do you know now that you wish you had known then? I think a lot of the lessons that I am learning that kind of I wish I would have known when I was an undergrad. I'm still am learning since I am pretty fresh out. Um, so, time management is a big piece. Um, I've had to learn the art of time blocking and managing your time wisely. Um, like Lori said, I'm working full time and in school as well. So my days can go by really quickly. And oftentimes I'm like, there's not enough hours in the day. So that was one big lesson that I wish I would have known while I was in school. Um, but more importantly, I think if I could go back, I probably would try to invest a lot more of myself into my professors. I mean, these professors and teachers of these courses, they're wealth of knowledge they have decades of experience. Um, and so I kind of wish I would have been a little bit more curious and just sat down and asked them um, to share whatever industry experience they have. Uh, so that's probably one of my many takeaways from undergrad. Excellent. Yeah, I think a lot of times we forget about our professors. We just go to class. We do what we need to do. And then we go move on to the next class or to our job or whatever the case may be. So, Rachel, I'm going to you know, go right to you. So same thing. What do you know now that you wish you had known then? I think it really comes down to just the idea of networking as, as well, not even just with other employers, but even with students. I feel like when we're all in school, we're all going through very similar um, things in college in the sense of like, we're learning how to manage our time. We're learning how to study properly. We're, we're building those key foundations to take with us outside of school into our careers. And I feel like just taking that time to really like build those connections with each other can really take you through life. You never know um, that full circle moment where you might've been in, in class with someone freshman year and then maybe four or five years down the line, you work together. And that connection just from then to working together can really build um, a relationship and just continue to network in that sense. Fantastic. And David, I know that you had done a lot of networking. You and I had spoken a lot off and on when you were looking for internships and things like that. And, you know, so again, same thing. Is there anything that you wish you had known? Because it it seems like you really were, you know, keeping your thumb on the tabs of, you know, what, uh, you know, the different employers were doing and what they were looking for. Um, but is it, was there anything that's, you know, kind of caught you by surprise since then? Yeah. So, um, especially at Fraser and Dieter, you know, I'm trying to move up the ladder at work and everything. Um, whenever you start getting into the higher levels, especially in the accounting industries, I wish I had gone, if I could go back, I wish I could network more with my fellow accounting students that were at UNG with me. Um, because one of the big things that you run into whenever you're working in these larger type firms is you need to be able to network with your fellow peers in multiple different departments because your new clients may be coming from the auditing department. You may have a marketing client coming from the marketing department. Um, so if I could go back, I wish I would have networked a little bit more with my fellow peers at UNG while I was there. Yeah, a lot of times we just don't think about it. It's just, again, you go to class, you know, I know you all kept yourselves very busy um, and, and, you know, especially right now, it seems like you've all landed, you know, where you are happy, at least for right now. Um, and a lot of times we meet with students who don't know what they want to do. They're not sure, or maybe they know the major, but they don't know the career that goes with it. Uh, so Lindsay, you know, thinking about, you know, when you had started here, 
did you know what you wanted to focus on academically when you first came to UNG? I had a pretty fair grasp on that I loved marketing and I'm passionate about it. It does come very naturally to me. Um, throughout high school, I did like this DECA. It was like a marketing club where I would go and compete and do all these different marketing events. So I've always had a love for marketing, um, but I definitely could not have perceived myself in the oil and gas sector. Um, so that kind of caught me by surprise, like when I kind of was taking inventory um, of where I've been and where I've started and where I am now. So um, I don't know. I love marketing just because it is it can't throw you in the craziest industries if you let it. Um, so it's fun. Excellent. Excellent. And, you know, Rachel, you had mentioned how you had started working at Uline temporarily. Was HR like where you wanted to go when you first started at UNG or was that something that kind of evolved over time? Yeah. So when I first started at UNG, I knew I wanted to go into business. I knew business was kind of the track that I was going in. I didn't know HR would have been kind of my end all be all until I took an HR class my last year. So I think also just the experience that I had, because when I was a temp year, I was working in the reception. So from reception, you're interacting with every single department within the company. So I think that kind of helped me narrow down to HR, but it really wasn't until I got that call to come back my last uh, month of school where they asked me to come temp uh, temporarily. And I think that's where I got my first experience in HR. Before that, I had a little glimpse of it, but I didn't really understand what it was. You, you hear um, different things about HR, but I think that experience definitely helped um, help me land into HR. In my career. Yeah. And a lot of times it's not until your senior year, then all of a sudden something clicks and you're like, oh, so this is what I've been working towards the whole time. And, you know, Jacob, you know, same thing, especially starting with physics. Um, a lot of times, I mean, you can use that in a lot of different areas. Did you know you wanted to kind of go into the field that you're in right now? Or was that something that you figured out once you got into your, your master's program? Yeah. So, um, since I was young, I always knew I had a passion for space and things related to that. Um, so physics kind of seemed like a natural progression for me. Um, I started at UNG as a physics and engineering uh, dual degree student um, with a plan to transfer out to, to UGA or uh, Georgia Tech. Um, but around my second year, I kind of fell in love with the physics department at UNG. And they, uh, by my own accord, they, they convinced me um, uh, to stay. And, uh, it, it was one of the best decisions I could have made. Um, my time at UNG with the physics department set me up to be so successful. Um, I started my master's program in January of, uh, 2023. And, uh, I had a job at Lockheed in February of 2023. Um, wow. so I, Lockheed actually, uh, paid for me to go through and get my master's. Um, but I was hired with just that physics degree. So i um, very grateful for that. Fantastic. Very cool. And, and did you apply like directly with Lockheed? Did you meet them at a, a any kind of conference or fair or how did you get in touch with them? Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a funny story. Um, I actually had flown out to Denver for an interview with another company. Um, and my brother-in-law, who at the time was working for Lockheed, um, said they were having a hiring event at a local uh, taco place. Um, and so I showed up with about 15 resumes in hand um, and just went around introducing myself, shaking hands. And uh, I left that event with a job offer for Lockheed. So, Wow, that is pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. And David, I mean, I... I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think you pretty much knew you wanted to go into accounting, but you also had so many other interests. Um, and so you weren't sure exactly where you were going to land. And so how did you get to where you are? And and did you know going into you, you know, your programs that that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, so um, I actually started UNG as a computer science major. Um, so I took my first computer science class, I think, my second semester at UNG, and I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. <laughs> um, so I then switched to accounting, and I fell in love with the program. Um, 
finance and supply chain and logistics kind of fell into my, my lap because after my internship, you know, I fell in love with the manufacturing type companies um, and they generally speaking had a lot of investment type situations and the finance and supply chain logistics just accelerated my knowledge in those specific fields. And once I got my job at Fraser and Dieter full time, um, that's just been something I've been specializing in using all three degrees. I mean, it's been it's been phenomenal using all three, um, considering where I started. You know, originally I was just computer science and I was just accounting. And now I've got a full career going with, you know, just those related entities. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and I love hearing how, you know, at first it was one thing, or maybe you had a vague idea, but you didn't know exactly where that was going to take you. Uh, because yeah, you never know. And you just have to be open to those different possibilities because you don't know where it's going. And Jacob, I think that's just so cool. How you're just like, yeah, sure. I'll just go try it. I, you know, I'll just walk on over and here you are. Um, and so now thinking about, you know, now that you've landed in your in your careers, you know, uh, and and I mean, I know you're going to go on from here, many other wonderful, wonderful tracks. But what do you feel, um, Rachel, I'm going to start with you. What do you think really makes someone successful in your type of career? And especially this is perfect as well, this second part of the question. What do you feel that employers in your industry are really looking for? in current students as well as recent graduates? Yeah, I think it really comes down to um, my, my work ethic at first. It was something that I developed through college, just taking on so many classes at the same time, learning to juggle school and life. And I think that work ethic really transitioned and helped me go from my college career to my full-time career. And I feel like from an employer side, um, nonetheless, when I go to career fairs, I really I think it comes down to a motivation and a drive to learn. It always comes down to continuously learning, no matter what um, department you go into, any um, role or new job, um, you're going to learn. And it's it's intimidating at first, but just having that drive to, to learn more and to ask questions and really just lean on each other to grow in your career, I think that really comes um, from a a college standpoint, as well as into a career path. So um, definitely dig deep on your motivation for why you want to do something and um, take those opportunities that come. Fantastic. And and Lindsay, I'm sure that's, you know, a lot of what you have to do, like you had said, social media is always changing. There's always new technology. Um, but what do you feel helps make, because again, marketing is a very competitive field. Um, so what do you think really helps make you successful? And what do you feel like, especially for Mansfield in particular, that they're looking for in terms of, you know, what kind of qualities for a recent graduate? Yeah, so I think the first word that kind of comes to my mind is just having that curiosity mindset, being ready to innovate, ready to change. So this could parlay into social media uh, because we, it feels like have something new, some new feature coming out every other month and we have to figure out okay how are we going to adapt how is mansfield going to approach this are we going to approach it um and then when you post on social media you have zero control over how that post um performs so it really is taking those risks and kind of putting yourself out there and being brave and being bold um so kind of along what rachel was saying just about that curiosity um i think more personally i've learned um just as a young person in my career that it's okay to fail sometimes like it kind of depends on how you come back and how you bounce back when you make a mistake um, because that's where I found most of the learning comes from because um, UNG is great about teaching those you the principles of what you're learning but once you kind of are hands-on and you try and fail and try again and then win um, it kind of does make it that much more fulfilling so I think another important um, I guess it, it's just important to know to bounce back and how you're going to approach failure. Excellent. Yeah. And, and there are times where, you know, you may stumble a little bit and got to just pick yourself right back up. <laughs> you know? uh, and so, David, you know, same question, um, you know, especially because, you know, in accounting, there's always going to be new laws, new regulations. So how do you stay up to date with all of that? Um, and, and again, what do you feel makes someone successful in your industry? There we go. Unmute myself. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, you know, staying on top of everything, being able to research and being able to just know 
really how to do proper research, you know, not just stopping at your first Google search, right? You know, so don't just stop at the one website that gives you the correct, your answer that you're looking for, you know, double check on it, make sure all the information is correct. But, you know, as far as in my industry, I think two things are paramount. If you're going to be successful, at least in accounting, you need to be able to communicate properly with, you know, not just, not just with clients, right? Cause you have to, you have to take technical tax lingo and break it down so that people who aren't as familiar with tax laws can understand it but also with your peers you know be able to communicate like where are you on stuff how's your situation going do they need help you know communication is key and then and also a willingness to accept that you know you're going to make mistakes it happens you know don't you know it's okay to fail sometimes it's okay to not be perfect every single time and have a willingness to grow and be better than what you were the day before Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, Jacob, I'm sure, you know, a company as gigantic as Lockheed Martin, I'm sure communication is, you know, very essential. Um, what what other kind of qualities do you feel that are important uh, for your particular industry and in your team? And, and you know, how how is it, you know, the best way to kind of navigate all of that? Yeah, you know, I think Rachel and Lindsay kind of killed it. I think the two biggest things are being able to able and willing to blindly jump into something um, and really to try to get passionate about what you're working on so that it doesn't seem like it's so uh, uh, menial. Everything that you're doing should feel like it's something new or something exciting that you're able to do um, and being able to put in that work and, and get it done um, even when sometimes it's not uh, fun to do. And Jacob, let me stay with you for just a second, uh, because, you know, you were saying how you just took advantage of this opportunity that just happened to present itself. It wasn't anything you prepared for. And there are times where, you know, we may feel a little bit hesitant, like, oh, I don't know, I'm not ready for that, or maybe I shouldn't do this. How did you kind of get yourself prepared for just jumping into something that you you had not even expected to do while you were on this trip? Yeah, it's 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 definitely a challenge to uh to try to talk yourself into doing something like that. Um, you know, the the old adage "fake it till you make it" I I think is is kind of there. If if you can make other people believe it, then maybe you'll start believing it yourself. Um, especially for me, you know, I went in there with a physics degree. I didn't have an engineering degree yet. I felt that I was um, underqualified. Um, but sometimes you put those restrictions on yourself where that restriction might not actually exist. So sometimes taking that chance, that opportunity, um, the worst they can do is say no. Um, but the best they can do is say yes. So, you know, it can't really hurt. Yeah. And that's, uh, and that's excellent because yeah, a lot of times I tell students that that is the worst that's going to happen is you don't hear from them from them or they say, no, thank you. And that's the worst thing that's going to happen. And they just keep moving from there. And so thinking about, you know, now that you, um, you know, have left UNG, you're in different areas, uh, you know, beyond the, the career aspect of it, it can be really challenging working with such a diverse group, you know, different ages, different backgrounds. Uh, some folks are married, some are not, some have kids, some don't. And so then how do you go about making friends? Um, you know, and that's that's something that I hear a lot from students as well. It's just this fear of the unknown when they graduate. You're not with classmates anymore. You don't have this kind of set schedule. So David, I'm gonna start with you. And so, you know, beyond the, the career aspect of it, how do you go about making a home for yourself now that you're detached from the college life? Yeah, so what I would, I highly suggest, I mean, we even we even talk about it amongst ourselves at work, even during busy season, um, you know, set yourself up with some really good hobbies, you know, get involved with hobbies that you love, you know, if you love volleyball, go sign up with the local volleyball team and play with the rec group or something um if you love to go hiking sign up with a hiking group in the area and go hiking with people cycling stuff like that but even at work if you're concerned about making friends at work you know go to the happy hours you know when everybody takes a lunch if you see everybody going to the break room go hang out with them you know take 30 minutes go eat lunch with them um you know just just have that mindset of you know you're all in the same place 
you know, you don't have to be perfect whenever you're introducing yourself to everybody around you type deal. Right. You don't need that perfect elevator pitch when you're just hanging out with your coworkers. You're like, hi, I'm Lori and I majored in. Da, da, da. Yeah. And Lindsay, I know you and I talked about this a little bit at the career fair. You were a little busy, so we didn't get to really dive right into it. But tell me a little bit more about, you know, how you're able to make a new community. I mean, you haven't gone terribly, terribly far, but still you're, you're, cause you were on the Delonica campus, correct? So You've moved away from campus, your your fellow students and classmates, they've all dispersed and gone their own way. So how do you kind of start over? Yeah, that was definitely, I'm very much a people person. So I began fearing that. I think my sophomore year of college was like, what am I gonna do after? How am I gonna make friends? Um, but I think like my biggest token of advice, just I moved from Dahlonega to Gainesville by myself, which is not very far, but I didn't know anybody really in the area. I'm not very local. Um, my biggest piece of advice is just say yes. So kind of what David was saying about if you have a hobby, go to a workout class if you if that's what you like to do. Go get in like some kind of book club. I don't know. Like luckily we do have social media where it's pretty easy to find different like Facebook groups, Instagram groups, things like that. So just say yes to every single opportunity. Um, I think being post-grad and taking that leap of faith and just saying yes to everyone and faking it till I make it and just introducing myself to people. That's how I made all of the relationships I have now and all of the dear friends I have now. Um, because I mean, if you are walking either around your office or wherever you're at, whether you're even in the grocery store and you go up and introduce yourself to someone, maybe compliment what they're wearing. Um, that's a really easy tip, by the way. It will literally like people are contagious. It's they love whenever you are like spreading joy to them and introducing yourself and making a point to make their day, they're like immediately drawn to you. Um, so just going up and saying hi to someone can literally make the world of a difference. That's probably my biggest piece of advice. Yeah, so uh, people love a good compliment, you know? So yeah, excellent, excellent. So Rachel, same thing, you know, and I know it's been a, you know, a couple of years now since you've, you know, moved on from UNG. And again, Uline is also a very large organization. So how do you maneuver through that and make connections? Yeah, I think kind of starting within like my, my team, um, really once I started in, we were very like a close knit team in the sense that like, we didn't necessarily just talk about work all the time. We talked about our personal life and we kind of built on um, the similarities that we have. Um, nonetheless, me and my coworkers were, um, many of us are just freshly out of college within the last five years. So um, that definitely helped kind of take work out of it and talk more about like some of our personal lives. But even going off of what Lindsay was saying and just complimenting others, there's a local coffee shop over here and I'm in there almost every single week. And I think just communicating and just building some personable relationships with even just the baristas has uh, definitely kind of kept that connection. Now they know we're like a regular, they know my name, they kind of built upon that. And then even just saying hi to others in the grocery store, going to the gym and just um, finding similarities with others and building off of that. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And and Jacob, you know, you're in a, a, a much larger city, Marietta, which is actually my old hometown from when I was a wee little one. And so I know that it's a massive town, much larger from when I lived there a long, 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 long time ago. But I would think that, you know, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity in a big city, but also you might feel a little overwhelmed or feel a little lost in that. And so how do you kind of make that area your new home? Yeah, so um, I think one of the big things to understand is, you know, for me at least, I work 10-hour days. The people that I'm around, I, I want to be friends with. I I don't want to be around people that I don't enjoy being around. Um, so making that effort to find something that connects you is, is usually not as difficult as some people make it seem, whether that's, um, you know, for a lot of people in the Southeast football, uh, is an easy thing for people to connect over uh, around here. Braves, I mean, we're only a mile and a half from the Braves Stadium. So after every game, people like to come and start the day by talking about that. Um, and then, but I, but I live around 30 minutes away from here. I live uh, up in Roswell, um, right in between here and Dahlonega, actually, which is very nice. Um, but I, I make efforts to uh, try to plan those outings like David was talking about whenever they go out for lunch um, tag along you're you're gonna learn things about your coworkers 
that you didn't know before. Um, and also all those friends that you had in college, I know a lot of people tend to spread out. Um, but you know, a phone call can happen from anywhere. Um, a, a drive home, uh, can turn into a phone call hands-free of course. Um, but it's, it's an easy way to keep up with old friends as well. Um, and, and keep you connected with your friends there too. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, I was a military spouse for a long time. My husband was in the Marine Corps. So trying to keep up with people as you disperse uh, is really important. So that way you keep those connections going. And in thinking about keeping those connections going, that of course goes back into developing your career and where you're going to grow from there. And so I was just curious, where do you see yourself in the next maybe five to 10 years? I know that sounds such a cliche interview question, but um, just if you have any ideas of where you want to go from here. So, David, I'm going to start with you, um, because, again, I, I, you and I talked, uh, which I miss our discussions about Harry Potter. And, uh, you know, we had so much fun. I mean, our conversations kind of went off the rails sometimes, but, um, you know, what, where are, you know, some, what are some of your plans over the next few years? Yeah, so um, I am actually, so as I mentioned, you know, one of my specialties at work right now is international businesses. Um, I am actually at UGA right now studying German um, to assist with my, all my German clients to assist in that language barrier that currently exists. Um, you know, Germany, it, Georgia is a hot spot for German foreign investment. So I'm currently working on building up that experience right now over the next five years, building up my language proficiency skills to build up that clientele um, and then continue growing from there. And then 10 years, hopefully maybe making partner or at least a tax senior at senior manager at my firm. Fantastic. And so, Jacob, you know, back to you, what, what are your goals in the next few years as well? Yeah, um, so I'm I'm hoping to move into some kind of uh, <clears throat> excuse me management position within the next few years. Um, what that looks like, I'm I'm not really sure. Um, my specific uh, you know domain, the advanced development programs, is a ever shifting uh, set of programs as the uh, the government decides to fund one and take away another. Um, we are kind of at the will of them. Um, but I'm hoping to move into some kind of functional lead role. Um, and and the way that I am doing that is is by finding mentors um, that exist in those roles today that I want to guide me to get to where they are. Um, they have a lot of experience that that can put me on the right path. Excellent. And that's great that you're reaching out to people and trying to figure out how did you get to where you are? Because I think a lot of times we see the end product and we see where people landed, but we don't know how they got that first step. And so that really helps to have a mentor. And that's great that you're reaching out to folks. And Rachel, are you hoping to continue to grow in HR or do you see other areas for yourself at Uline in particular or elsewhere? I guess we we don't probably don't want to say if an employer is watching, but... <laughs> Yeah, so I'm um, kind of within my career path would actually go into the benefit side. So really kind of digging deeper into that side where I'm not too familiar with just as I'm more of like the entry level side. So um, currently, I'm actually um, every year I've kind of been participating in webinars and seminars to just continuously learn. And um, they've definitely helped aid in that. I'm very much known on my team as a continuous learner. So I always bring new facts to them, new information. So kind of digging deep into the benefits and then hopefully within the next 10 years going into a management role and um, definitely continuing on in the HR field. Yeah. And, and the great thing about Uline, it is such a large company that you have that ability to kind of move around and, and try on some different things and, and move to other locations. If do, uh, does Uline have like other HR manager positions, like in other areas of the country? Yeah. So we have 13 branches and every oh, wow. branch has um, an HR team. So um, we just kind of helped build Naples, which was in Florida. So I was one of the primary coordinators down there. So I was able to kind of build that branch from a, a hiring standpoint. So just that experience and even just getting to know the team down there has definitely kind of aided me to continue growing in HR and just building those relationships with senior managers and just other employees across the company in total. 
Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Making those networks, you know, making that connection work for you. And so Lindsay, especially, I mean, I know you just graduated just last year. So, uh, but you know, you're of course now a MBA student and so also continuous learner, as y'all can see, it never stops. <laughs> uh, even when you're out of class, you might go back into class or just learning on the job. So Lindsay, do you see yourself growing in the digital marketing field? Are there other areas of marketing that you'd like to explore? Yeah, so my first step is to finish my MBA program um, and graduate next year. Um, but yes, I do see, foresee myself staying at least within marketing. Um, I am digital. I've never really seen much of sales. We have tons of sales reps and everything at Mansfield and a lot of different departments. Um, so I'm not really sure. I would love to move into a managerial role. Um, but I always tell even people within my company that ask me that same question, as many people as I can meet, like that's my goal. Um, we have offices all over North America and in Canada um, and just about a thousand employees. So I'm trying to see how many people I can meet because in that way, like Every person could teach me something, especially about the oil and gas industry, because um, I still do feel like a newbie some days when it comes to that. So I also hope to kind of grow in that knowledge um, and just further see, you know, there's not a whole lot of digital marketing within the oil and gas sector. So I'm curious to see what my ideas, what I can bring to the table um, to help my company. Fantastic. And we're already, I can't believe it, we're already getting close to the end. So I, I definitely want to make sure that we have some time if there's, you know, what kind of advice would you share with students about how, the, what they can do now to prepare themselves, you know, regardless of whatever kind of, you know, industry they want to go into, whatever kind of role they're, they're looking to get into. Um, Jacob, I'll start with you. What, what are some things that you feel that students should be working on to get themselves ready? Yeah, you know, I think uh, a big personal one is self-confidence and believing that you're going to be able to do um, whatever you feel driven to do. Um, I think that that's one thing that, uh, you know, I think our generation in particular uh, has struggled with is feeling like you are capable of doing these things. Um, but if you asked me five years ago, I never would have believed that I'm in the position I'm in today. Um, so I, I definitely think that people should uh, stand up for themselves and feel like they are capable of doing things even beyond what they might think they are now. Excellent. Yeah, you never know what life has in store for you. Uh, I I think I'm, I'm sure Diane and I could both attest to we had no idea this is where we would land in our careers. Uh, so Rachel, uh, so then same question to you. What what do you feel were, were some of the things that you experienced that students should be working on and that you felt was like the most beneficial to you that they should be working on getting themselves ready for? Yeah, I think it really comes down also to the career fairs that UNG offers. I feel like that was my opportunity to really just meet with other individuals, even employers. Although many times I went, I really wasn't looking for a position, but it was more just to get to know what's out there and to see opportunities that maybe it doesn't work well for me at that time. But later down the line, once you kind of come full circle, maybe you'll meet them again. And um, even just building on what other companies are kind of doing. Um, it also brings out like outreach opportunities, just different seasons in um, the college career that I wish I took more advantage of, um, although I was kind of in school during COVID, it was very virtualized, but that was also a really cool opportunity as there was very much breakout sessions, one-on-ones, but even just going to, going up to an employer and just kind of saying, what do you do? Like, what, what makes you so, um, where did, where did you start and where, how did you get here? And just kind of seeing their advancements, their experiences can um, even maybe input an idea in yours to maybe grow from there. Excellent. Excellent. And especially, you know, like I said, Rachel and Lindsay, I saw you both at our latest career fair. Uh, and so Lindsay, since you are kind of, you know, on that forefront too of talking to students, part of that recruitment effort, uh, what are some of the things that you're seeing that students do well? Maybe what are some of the things that they need to improve on and what could they do to, you know, do all of that and get ready for that next step? Yeah. Um, so like Lori said, I've been supporting Mansfield, at least through UNG kind of being an alumni presence um, on campus, which has been so fun because I see so many people that were in class with me or people that I knew when I was in school. 
um, I think what UNG students are doing very well is they are very confident, um, which is such an awesome thing just to witness. And I can see just like the labor and the hard work that they're putting in through either these pros programs, uh, through polishing up their resumes. Um, and it's actually turning out really well. But that's like the first thing that comes top of mind. Rachel might have more of like a, oh, like this is from an HR standpoint, what they're doing really well. Um, but I just appreciate our students, their willingness to just come and have a conversation with me. And even if we're just talking about what classes they're taking, maybe not even specifically about Mansfield and our intern opportunities, um, just being able to connect. They're doing that very, very well. Excellent. And so David, uh, last bits of advice. What can students do to make themselves marketable? Um, I know you did a few internships, but what are some other options or, you know, is it in addition to the internships and classwork? And what are some of the things that you think would help me uh, best now that you've been in your field for about four years now? What I would tell everybody and, you know, this this advice is also coming from all my conversations with career services at UNG, right, is take initiative. Don't don't sit back and wait for something to fall into your lap. You know, when I remember when I was at UNG, I couldn't get an internship for the first entire year that I was looking for an internship. My GPA wasn't good enough. And finally, I walked into an accounting office down in Atlanta and ask them to meet with me and tell me how do I get an internship with them. And that spiraled everything into what I needed to do, get clean up my resume, clean up my cover letter, get my interviews, everything. So take initiative. If you're struggling with finding a career that you're looking for, take initiative, get out there and find something that works. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, I, I can't believe it. We're already at the end of our time. It goes by so fast. And so again, I want to th say thank you to all of you for being here today. Really appreciate it. I know you all have extremely busy schedules. Uh, so taking the time out of your crazy busy days, it's great to see all of you and hear all of you again. And uh, thanks again uh, so much. Um, but before I super, super let you go, do we have any questions from any of our students? Uh, you're welcome to unmute yourself or even just to put that in the chat. If you have anything just off the top of your head, we'll wait just about one more minute uh, before we let our folks go. Um, okay, so Mariana, you have a question. So don't worry, we'll give you, you're welcome to unmute yourself if you want or you're welcome to type really, really fast because I, I, I know it's like, I'm, but I appreciate you for saying you have one because, you know, otherwise we're always sitting here going, I don't know if they have a question. <laughs> okay, so Mariana asks, uh, do you belong to any honor student organizations and how has that impacted your career? Anyone uh, part of those organizations or were part of those organizations when you were here? No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you a part of any kind of uh, professional organizations in your industry? So I'm, I'm a part of the AIAA, which is the Association for the Institute of Aeronautics, um, something along those lines. It's essentially the, uh, the governing body for uh, like regulations within the aeronautics. Uh, industry. Um, and then also, um, I'm also a part of the INCOSI, which is for specifically for systems engineering. Um, and both of those are extremely valuable um, resources to have, as you will, if you're a systems engineer, you use them daily. Excellent. Excellent. Anyone else? Okay, and 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 how can students reach out and connect with you? Is LinkedIn the best way? Uh, are you willing to chat with any uh, or current students? All right, yeah, you can find all of them on LinkedIn. Uh, that's where I'm connected with them as well. Um, so I know, and, and and there's been multiple times where I've sent students. Uh, I know Jacob. That's how you and I first met on LinkedIn. Was I had a student that wanted to intern at a location where you had interned. Um, and I know all of our alumni are more than happy to chat with our students and help them figure that out. So you can always find them on LinkedIn. Um, so if no one else has any other questions, 
I'll let everyone go for the day. Thank you again so much for being here. Really appreciate your time.